will be able to dedicate her baby to the Lord. So today, we welcome the family who's visiting. We also, I don't think um, we have Joseph online. Oh, well, welcome Joseph online. So, I mean, he can't be here. He's in Germany right now. Um, we, we welcome Nikki and their new daughter, Maya Luce. And I'm going to go down there. That way you guys don't have to come up here. So it's such a blessing that we can come together and share this wonderful time together and be a part of this dedication service. Today, Nikki and the family have um, come to give thanks for, for Lucy, and we'll, as we'll be dedicating Lucy to the Lord and praying that she would come to know and serve Him with her life. We also dedicate Joseph and Nikki to God, asking that he would give them wisdom, understanding and knowledge and the ability how to raise their daughter in the way of the Lord, as we've been instructed by his word. So everyone this morning has a role as a church body, because Nikki, Nikki's first concern was, well, I mean, I'm in the service, I don't really go here and stuff, but she really loves you guys, if you guys haven't, you know, were able to tell. Um, your part of the body of the church is the lifting, lifting them up in prayer. Lifting up Lucy, remembering her, remembering the parents, both Joseph and, and Nikki, as they try to teach her and raise her in God's word. That they'll it, be setting godly examples for her, teaching her properly out of the God's word. And one day, that she would place her faith and trust in Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. So we want to bring up the family, grandma, and sister, Madeline. So we're told in Proverbs 22, 6, right? Train up a child in the way he should go, and even when he grows older, he will not abandon it. So I have questions for Nikki and Joseph? Joseph probably can't answer, but... <laughs> <laughs> to the parents who are entrusted with the raising of Lucy, Joseph and Nikki, do you recognize that Lucy is a gift of God? And both thank God for the glory of God, for the gift of your daughter. Yes. Do you accept the joys and responsibility of parenting, promising to give proper love and care to Lucy throughout her life according to God's word? Yes. We help God with, with the help God provides. Do you commit to teach Lucy the faithfulness of God's word and demonstrate through your own example and witness what it means to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength? Yes. Now to the congregation. Will you offer ongoing love, support, and prayers and encouragement to Joseph and Nikki in their roles as Lucy's parents? Yes. Will you also be faithful in praying for Lucy and as much as you can are able to help teach and set a godly example for her so that she might one day come and trust, come to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. So we have Madeline here. She's in our culture, we have, well, in, there's godmothers in American culture too, right? So <laughs> she's agreed to be, uh, if something happens to Nick, Nikki, to be um, Lucy's godmother, to protect her and watch over her. Do you have the same? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have Lucy. We're going to pray for her and pay for the parents, and we'll go from there. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank so much for Lucy. May you bless her and keep her, Heavenly Father. May she, your face shine upon her, and may you be gracious to her. May she one day come, Heavenly Father, to know who you are and, sit and serve you as Lord and Savior. May both her parents take upon the role that they need to do in the spiritual raising 
and to take this role seriously, to provide the example and the teaching and guidance that she will need. We also ask Heavenly Father to guide us as a body, the church, in lifting Lucy up in prayer and the parents to are involved in this raising spiritually. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, just for this opportunity that we have to be here and to glorify you in your presence. We pray these things in your personal name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So on behalf of the church family, is she sleeping? Yeah. <laughs> She's sleeping. No. We present and dedicate uh, Maya Luce to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys can sit. Okay, so now we come to the portion where we need a special time for Grace and I and for our entire family. We need to be reminded what is this all about? Why is this so important, so special? Right? Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 to 8, we're going to look at. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 to 8. This is why it says, this is important. Here the Apostle Paul shares this truth. Now I make known to you, brothers and sisters, the gospel which I preached to you, which I, you also received, in which you also stand, by which you are also saved. If you hold firmly to the word which I preached to you, unless you believe in vain, for I handed down to you the first in importance which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, that he was buried and that he raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Caiaphas, then to the twelve, then he had appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, in whom remain until now, but, I have, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles and last to all, to the one untimely born, he appeared to me also. This morning as we come to the Lord's table, communion is for any person who has believed by placing their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone for their salvation. My personal belief is that if you've done this, you made a profession of faith when it, within the public forum, which is baptism. We are told in Romans 1, 16 and 17, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to anyone who believes, first the Jews and also the Greek. For it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as written, but the righteousness one will live by faith. I also feel it's my responsibility to you that you should have, if not done so yet, examine yourself to see who you are in your relationship to Christ. Not only with Christ, but also your fellow believers in Christ, your brothers and sisters. I mention this because it's a serious matter. We're told in 1 Corinthians 11, 27 to 29, Whoever eats of the bread and drinks of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy way shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But, if a, person, but a person must examine himself, and in doing so, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For the one who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not properly recognize the body. At this time, I'd like to call the ushers forward to pass the bread and the juice to everyone in the congregation. Thank you. 